not even give them a penny. No money for education. By the way, the education system stinks. But we need to educate those who need it the most, not the spoiled kids to me, the kids that need it the most. So here's my one of the things that I'm going to be working more and more on. I've realized that society goes into a direction because of role models, whether it's uh, 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 look, you know, <laughs> let's, let's look like a moron. It's a role model, whether it's the Kardashian, whether it's a Justin Bieber, whether it's a Britney Spears, whether it's 50 cents, no cents. Whatever it might well, no, the be. social engineers know what they're doing. They're giving us these punk, disheveled, pathetically ignorant role models. So we'll be like that. So we're it's, easy to control. You got it. So one of the directions that we're moving in with the Trends Journal and the Trends Research Institute is to work to develop new role models. That's where it has to change. And to me, it has to change through entertainment in, in one of the major factors. Because you know that your audience, my audience, the people that we know, we're only a, you know, we're maybe 10% of society. The other people are Jersey shored out. Even that I know a name like Snooky is disgusting. So to, it has to come also from other avenues. So as we're launching the second American revolution, that's one of the avenues that we're going to be launching it through entertainment. Very exciting. Gerald, uh, I want to get back into Europe and what's happening over there and also get your forecast on the militarization of police. In fact, let's just do that now. And then I have this clip off of Kudlow where they're admitting that foreign bankers have dominated and hijacked America. And then the guest go down the line and agree, yes, we absolutely are slaves to international bankers. But then, oh, it's kind of a good thing as the Federal Reserve knows best. So it's just really off the charts to see it becoming this transparent. But first, you mentioned the degeneration of society. They were getting ready for this derivatives collapse over a decade ago. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. They, uh, they understood the Ponzi scheme. They knew where it was going. The issue is they may have even overdone it in their fraud. Uh, and so that's, I think, where the debate lies. But now in St. Louis, Missouri, and everywhere, and I've talked to police, but also uh, the head of the Army, the Secretary of the Army, actually, uh, just uh, two weeks ago in the CFR wrote that, yes, they're going to have 4,000 armed troops, a brigade, regular Army or Marines in every major city, and they're going to run checkpoints. And then suddenly, oh, they're rolling around, and the news is like, oh, people like it. It fights crime. It's the rollout of martial law beginning, and it's in the big black neighborhoods everywhere. So you, you ship the drugs in, you dumb the people down, you screw up the education, you send everybody to jail so they come back, and that's the only education they got is from a prison. It is what it is. But they're going to sell the entire police state, and I said this a decade ago, and here it is happening, first off of the imploding inner cities, predominantly around black folks. But then as the rest of society implodes, it's going to happen to everybody. But then they sell people, oh, that's just the black neighborhood. I'm getting calls and emails, and, and, and I see comments on my videos online saying, Alex, yeah, they're getting ready for martial law because of, you know, what's happening in Chicago, these gangbangers. Well, why did MTV and this culture magnify this? My point is that they're going to do it in these areas and then expand it out everywhere else. And here it is. Martial law is being quietly put in place. Uh, that's my analysis. What's your take? Oh, it's one of our top trends for 2012. And yeah, we're on the same page. We said as the economy continues to worsen, they're going to continue to take more of our rights away. It began, I mean, we saw it coming. Well, you reported on it heavily, so did I, about the National Defense Authorization Act signed by El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos. I say that because we become a banana republic on New Year's Eve when no one was, was watching. And what did that allow it to do? Among other things, the, it, re, it repealed the Posse Comitatus Act of what, 1878? Yep. Which allows the military to perform police duties. Wonderful. Oh, and what's that new executive order that El Presidente signed in March that allows him to declare martial law at, quote, a potential threat? Yeah. No, it's all in place. And so what's happening is that America's turned into a fascist state. 
It's right in front of us. And you pointed it out well. They put these stupid people on the air, the prostitutes. Well, I'm really glad that the military is here because now, you know, they could stop the crime. They put one after another on. And the same thing happened in New York last week when the guy forgot to plug in the metal detector at JFK and they brought the airplanes back off the tarmac. And somebody, somebody from San Diego said, well, better safe than sorry. When was the last time an airplane blew up? No, no, they're selling this idea that if there aren't perfect checkpoints and troops, Al-Qaeda's going to get you. Meanwhile, Al-Qaeda publicly works for them. You said it. You gave the details. They're in Libya. They're in Syria. Began in Afghanistan. Exactly. Well, I'm telling you, it comes down to something very simple, and people don't want to recognize it. We have sociopaths and psychopaths destroying our lives. It's no, it's no more than that. And people are tolerating it. They don't know better than we do. And here, just for the track record, everything they touch, they turn to crap. You want to start a war? Could you ever win one? Oh, you're going to bail out and spend trillions of dollars to help your buddies at the bank? Hey, it didn't work. Oh, Obama, you said that by 2010, that's right, 2010, the unemployment rate would be down to 7%. Gee, it's over 8%. What went wrong? They, one thing they do, a Bush, Going into and those are all cooked numbers. Let me ask you this question, and, and then I want to get to this world government clip from Kudlow and CNBC, uh, legends in their own minds, as they almost have no audience now. That's another issue. Uh, but what do you see happening long term? Because history shows the attempts to start war with Russia isn't going to go well. The attempts to set up this police state isn't going to go well, because as the troops go bankrupt as their money won't take care of their wives and kids back home they're waking up uh, as they're meant you know told to serve five six seven tours it's not working i mean i don't see this working for the white shoe boys and i already see the white shoe boys as you describe them buying armored redoubts in the caribbean and europe and the cook islands and, and australia so I, I already see a lot of them leaving so that doesn't bode well for their structure if they're already uh you know getting a get out of town plan. Well, you know, they had the wherewithal to do whatever they want at any time, so they could stay or leave. They're just making, you know, contingency plans. It's coming down. The whole thing is collapsing. As you pointed out, you know, the troops in St. Louis and everywhere else they're going to be putting them, all the checkpoints we have now, the new legislation that I've seen you reporting on, the House legislation that allows the TSA now to be, to be everywhere. That, that they're going to be pushing through. So they're putting everything into place. You make the point about will the troops follow orders? I recently received an email from a, uh, a soldier from the uh, former Czech, Czechoslovakia saying how they refused to obey orders. They were young guys, and they wanted them to put down riots and rebellions, and they wouldn't do it. Will the American soldiers and police do the same thing here? Will they fire on their brothers? From what I see now, I'm afraid they will. Because I see what they do with the Occupy movements. I see how they bash people to pieces, as we've seen the clips. The police, they, they kill that homeless guy in California. So I'm afraid that the nation has degenerated so much morally that they will fight against us. And I'm not saying that in anything that's so far out to think. I mean, after all, here we are today, you and I talking to each other. How many American soldiers got killed in Afghanistan today? How many Americans were killed other people in Afghanistan today? How many drone strikes killed innocent people today or this week? So as long as we have, oh, oh, and the criminality. How many heads rolled on Wall Street from all the money being stolen from us? Who are these, you know, I love this term. They call them overzealous prosecutors who beat up little, you know, beat up the people like us, the smaller people on the, on the level. But where are these overzealous prosecutors prosecuting the real criminals? So I don't see it happening, Alex. 
because it's immorality at every level. You don't, as I said, you haven't seen one head roll on Wall Street. And what do they do? Roger Clemens, how much money do they spend going after this guy? Three million dollars instead of going after the head of MF Global. Exactly. So that's where I see it going. But again, it goes back to we the people. When enough people, I, I've said this before, there's this wonderful Hindu saying, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. Anybody that's really practiced at anything or got really good at it knows they had a great teacher in their lives. The same thing to me holds true for the people. When the people are ready, the leader will appear. But to me, the people are not ready emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I was out the other night down here at the waterfront in Kingston, and I sat outside and I was having my dinner, and I'm watching the people go by. It's like the whales got beached. And well, how could people go out in public like this? No one was dressed. People uh, eating ice cream cones, you know, slovenly dressed, no manners. What has happened to the dignity of this country? I have a, a picture hanging on the wall. It's in one of my books, What Zizzy Gave Honey Boy, of my parents, may they rest in peace. Italian immigrants, 1934, the height of the Depression. My father worked in a, in a, a, a radio factory. My uncle Frankie and uncle Mario worked in fish stores. My uncle Al was a butcher. They were all working people at these jobs. Every one of them is dressed and looking dignified. What happened? And you know what happened? It's very simple. We've been chained and mauled. Because my Uncle Al, he had his own butcher's shop. My Uncle Frankie and Uncle Mario, they had their own fish stores. Now you got to work for Walmarts. You got to work for Apple, making $62.50 a week. You have to work for Staples. There used to be stationery stores. There used to be grocery stores. There used to be hardware stores. That's right, little boys and girls. Not everything was chained and mauled. They've given everything to the rich. They've given everything to the Buffets. They've been gated. They've been chained and they've been mauled. And as long as it keeps going in this direction, you're gonna keep working for the man. You will never have a career. Waste your money on college. Go to work for one of the big guys so they can enslave you for the rest of your life. That's what's happened to America. We used to have neighborhoods. We used to have entrepreneurs. It wasn't gobbled up by the greedy Tysons. The fat Cargills, the bloated Buffets. How many more billions do you need? How many more billions do you need, Warren? Stop telling people to drink Coke. It's crap. It's poison. They're poisoning our minds, our bodies, and they've robbed our spirit. So as long as we keep going in this direction, you know my motto, break the chains. Olive Garden's not Italian food. Pizza Hut is in pizza. Oh, I loved it. They had the clown out there. The prostitutes rolled out the McDonald's clown. They're chef. Hey, chef. There's no such thing as a chef at McDonald's. He said none of the food is unhealthy, and they let him get away with it.